Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be closing out the month of October for our budget and moving on to November in the next video. So I can't wait to get into the numbers with you. It won't be a very long video because I did do a lot of the work in advance and I apologize for any change in lighting that you might see because it is a gloomy day in Seattle right now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. For those of you who are new, my name is Bo. I live in Seattle, Washington. I am 31 years old and I am working towards early retirement and we can get started right now. Starting with our bills for the rest of October. So as I've stated, I already have them pre-written out here and the only ones that we needed to complete were Netflix, which was $25.91 for this month. The gym membership, which was $220.20 our groceries which the second half was 103 dollars and two cents so that comes to a total of 228 dollars and two cents so we were under the budget and then we also had my blog bill which was three dollars and 88 cents and then no more debt so that is all of our bills for the month of october and we are just two months away from completely finishing this complete uh, total bill tracker. Moving on to more of our housekeeping items. I was able to save $500 more towards my end of year trip. So that brings us to a total of $2,500 for the month of October. And I'm looking forward to seeing how much I can save in November and December. For our emergency fund, that $2,500 wasn't completely towards our emergency fund. Um, the 500 actually went towards my trip, so I did not add that here. We are still at a total of 20,000. And then nothing for my individual brokerage until after our trip. And we do get to add one more bean. So I will do that right now. Because one bean equals $500. And now we get to move on to the month of October. So right off the bat, I've never been able to say this, but I met every single goal for the month. My first one was to fully fund my emergency fund and to save $2,000 and I did, to save 500 for my end of year trip and I did, and then to eat at home 20 times. And we've really been doing better at eating home cooked meals, eating at home, basically prioritizing what's in the fridge. And I think you'll see that in my spending um, pretty soon here. And as I said, when we first started our month, um, there was really nothing much scheduled for this month. And I was okay with that because it means that there would be less of a chance of me spending too much over my budget. So outside of Fall Fest, we really didn't do anything else that was too crazy in terms of extracurriculars. Um, I had two paydays and I had a dentist appointment. So again, I'm not planning on celebrating Halloween. So there's really nothing left to this month for me. And moving on to our spending. One thing I did notice this month was that I got a lot of extra money that I don't usually count in my budget. So things like bank interest and credit card cashback, I usually leave that out. But I'm starting to realize that that's a lot of money that I'm leaving on the table. So for this month, at least, that's around $80 that I probably would have left out um, and for me that covers a few bills so I definitely added those in this time because I feel like they're a substantial amount of money so I did get paid on the 25th of October and it was two thousand four hundred and twenty nine dollars and twenty five cents and of that I saved another five hundred dollars which brought my total to twenty five hundred and all of my spending was pretty tame this month um, if you see um, over here really fast, I didn't spend too much. I would say I did spend more getting food from the grocery store instead of eating out at restaurants, which overall was a lot cheaper. I did go over budget in my day-to-day -day spend because I did um, donate $100, as you can see here, to someone's GoFundMe for a medical issue. So that was kind of an unexpected expense, but um, the person's a friend, a uh, childhood friend, so I really felt it necessary to help her out. And I really think that that is the main driving force of me being over my budget um, overall. 
but I was able to cut back in other areas within my budget that definitely helped bring that number back down so that I wasn't 100 over my total budget. Another thing that I did was I went half on dog food because we did get a little bit extra just so that we don't have to leave the house on election day um, and during Halloween because things get a little, you know, active in the city when we reach uh, holidays and milestone days like that. So we're just gonna kind of hide out a little bit for that. Um, other than that, really, we did not pay for anything else. Like I bought some cleaner that we needed. I mean, other than that, it was just grocery shopping, the donation, and then the stuff from the last video. We really did not spend too much. Um, my total miscellaneous spending came out to $437.76 which unfortunately is over my miscellaneous budget for the month um, of 300. I do wanna note that had I had my normal budget of 500, I would be under, but I was trying to push myself this month and I had it at three, so I did go over that. Um, and then if you look at all these categories here, I was under in pretty much all of them except my discretionary. Um, I didn't spend on beauty at all this month. Um, I didn't add the food to pets because it wasn't planned for. So I'm gonna keep that at zero. And then my entertainment was under $30, which is what I budget for the month. And then my living was supposed to be $16.35 even, and it was $15.96.23. So I really think um, the $80 here and the minimal dollars left over um, in my living expenses helped to buffer some of that $137 um, in my discretionary spending because my total budgeted expenses of $22.70 ended up being an actual expense of $22.84.97. So really the difference was $14.90 which is fantastic. I'm really trying to keep that over budget number under 20. My balance from last month was 1869.27 and my total income this month was $4,979.24. So a total income or total balance for me was $6,848.51. My total expenses were really a fraction of that. As you guys can see, my total spending here was $22.84.97. So the difference was $4,563.81. That's a big chunk of change that I did not spend on miscellaneous and bills. And I used most of that. I would say about 36% of that. I used it for saving, um, $2,500 here. And then the balance going forward was $2,063.81, of which uh, 13 of that will come out for rent next month on the first so basically how I do this is I look like I have a big balance going forward because I split one check for bills and miscellaneous spending and then one check for rent and then saving so um, at the end of the month it always seems like I have like a thousand dollars two thousand dollars left over but really it's because rent doesn't come out until the first of that next month so Really, if you take 13 out of this, which is pretty much the buffer that sits in my checking account always is around two to $500. So that's pretty standard for me. And as you can see here, if you look at this pie chart, most of my money is left over for next month and savings, which is what I prefer. I prefer savings to be the biggest, which it is this time, which is great. And then basically paying myself and then keeping my money. I want to be the two biggest ones. The third biggest here is my living expenses, which is less than 30% of my total income. And that is really the key to saving a lot of money um, in a quicker amount of time. It's just making sure if you can that your living expenses are no more than 30% of your income. And sometimes you can get to that in ways that aren't the most ideal, like sharing housing or even living with your parents if you can. Um, living in not um, maybe your first choice of city just so that you can save some extra cash that honestly is the biggest factor in how much I'm able to save because I am married. I share housing with my husband. So that is just one way that I'm able to kind of keep a leg up in this situation. And yeah, my entertainment stays very low, 0.4%, because the entertainment that I pay for 
uh, Netflix um, and my Apple storage. I really don't spend that much time inside. My real source of entertainment is free entertainment, going outside on hikes, uh, going for walks, just spending quality time with people that I care about. So my entertainment, um, a lot of people would spend a lot of money there. Um, but really, I just am not interested in it as um, a, in a conventional way, let's say. So then if we do our reflections for this month, I would say this is the first time that I achieved all of my goals for the month. And I don't even know how to feel about this. I'm very happy for it. And I'm just going to keep that same formula so that I can just finish out the rest of this year successfully, um, as successfully as possible. And then in terms of where I had the most trouble, I would say, honestly, it's always going to be in the unexpected expenses because uh, for the most part, I spent my grocery budget pretty robustly on things at the grocery store instead of going to restaurants to eat, which is usually my uh, biggest vice. And I didn't do that this time. We went out to eat, I believe, once to get pizza and it was within the budget. So that's really not a big deal to me. So really um, that unexpected expense, seeing someone in need, um, the GoFundMe, I just can't not give money if I am in that position to do so and someone genuinely needs help that I care about. So that honestly is where I have the most trouble. In terms of learning new things about myself, not much, but I do think that staying within your budget is pretty great once you gain momentum. And I'm trying to be careful with my wording here and not saying easy, but it does get easier as time goes on because it really is a snowball effect. And once you start seeing the results of your saving and your discipline, it almost gets addicting to see that money growing in your savings or in your investments. And I really feel like the momentum is what keeps um, us going as opposed to being motivated because you're not always motivated. What can I improve on this month? Honestly, purchasing food is still kind of an issue. Um, we were only 14 over the whole budget, but if I hadn't gone back for groceries so many times, I think we could have definitely reeled that in. So that's where I'm gonna be focusing next month is just to make sure that when I'm at the grocery store, I'm getting everything that I need in one go, so I'm not going back. Um, it doesn't help that we've kind of changed how we're eating. So our definition of snacks is just different now. We're not eating necessarily processed foods. So when things do run out, um, I feel the need to go back and get them. So that's just something that I'm gonna have to focus on in the month of November. So it'll be interesting to see how I navigate that at the same time going through the Thanksgiving holiday and our vacation that's scheduled for the end of November. So that is all that I have for the month of October. Overall, a very successful month. And I'm super happy that you guys chose to finish out this month with me. But what I wanna know is in the comments, how your October went and what are your plans for November? I wanna know how you're planning to carry out your budget for the holiday season. And if you are even planning to carry it out for the holiday season, because I know some people like to take a break and go on hiatus. And so that's what I wanna know in the comments down below, just how everything's going, what are your reflections for this month? And I will get to those comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.